All right, guys, what is going on? It is your least favorite motor vlogger, Brian636, coming here live with my baby, the bike that built this channel, the 2003-2004 ZX6R, the 636, the OG. Today, I really do wanna just do a parts breakdown on this, why I'm running these parts, a whole lot of B-roll of some of the crazy stunts I do on this thing, and the parts that allow me to do that better. First and foremost, I'm sure you guys are saying, Brian, that's not your bike. Well, yes, it is. Uh, shout out to Proper Powder down in Birmingham, Alabama. Their IG is down below. They redid all my powder coat on this thing from the frame to the swing arm to the subframe to the cages to the sub cages. It looks like a damn new bike. I love it. And of course, we stuck with an OEM color scheme because you know me. I love Kawasaki. They got it right. And we stuck with OEM red. Now, this girl is only a few hundred miles away from being 70,000 miles old. And I really want to get into some of these parts that have helped her get to this age. So let's start from the front. Up front, I got that front wheel wrapped with a Michelin 2CT. This is a good, sticky, consistent tire that almost all of us that roll stoppies um, really do trust. And for rolling burnouts, grip is extremely important. So this is the tire I've been running for a long time. For the rotors, I have ZX14 310 millimeter wave rotors. Up front, I have the R6 to R1 monoblocks. Super popular brake. They're really consistent. They grab really well. Yamaha did a great job designing those. Of course, I have steel lines run up to the Brembo 16 millimeter old school R1 Brembo. This came off of, I think, a 2004 R1. They came stock on them. Whenever this one goes bad, I'll probably just be replacing it with a new school Brembo, but that's what I have on it for now. And of course, I have Motul RBF 660 in it. You need a high boiling point brake fluid, whether you're doing wheelies, whether you're doing stoppies, whether you're doing rolling burnouts, your brakes are gonna heat up and you, that's the last thing you want. So of course, they're on steel lines as well. Now let's talk about the guts of the front end. This is a 0506 fork with a stock 0304 front rim. I know a lot of guys do different years for them. I just, I enjoy the way the 03s look. I'm a big fan of Kawasaki, how they did it this year. So I'm gonna keep the stock front rim for a while with an 0506 front fairing. I have these shock socks on there to make sure all that brake dust and debris stays off of my fork seals and I'm not blowing fork seals every other day. Now, as we work our way up front, let's talk about the controls, the things that you guys look at every single day. I have an NDC triple that I actually got as a gift and I've just been running it ever since. It's been really good for me with 50 millimeter converti bars at zero degrees. I know a lot of guys run sevens, but I like the zeros. You square up really well and they just work very well. Attached to these converti bars, I have a one finger clutch from the six shop in that matching red looks absolutely great. With a 14 millimeter Brembo, I know a lot of guys are gonna give me crap for this. You need a 16, you need a 19, you need a 17. I enjoy the 14 because I do do a lot of uh, street stunting on this bike, on the highways, and you don't want too much brake. That's the last thing you want. That's how you get mousetrap. But I like to play with my brake a lot, so I went with the 14. The last little bit of front piece I will talk about is this Stealth Stay slash Johnny P front stay. It's a metal windscreen with aluminum front end. It's just super supportive, tied in with that badass steel frame. And when we are talking about the frame, let's just go ahead and address the elephant in the room. It is a steel frame. It is a steel front half frame. These are normally around $1,200 to $2,000. Uh, the wait time is absolutely incredible because no one in our industry likes to make a steel frame at a, at a reasonable time. So it is what it is. Get in line, people. If you're going to drop your bike, this is something you need. And speaking of protection, because you know I love protecting my bikes, I've been with CSP Cox Stunt Parts for a very long time. I have a Cox Stunt Parts sub cage, no Euro bend, it's just a straight bend, regular, with a Cox full size cage, of course, for the 0304. With a nice little 12 bar on the back with a big old piece of titanium. Protecting this bike is key to me. I have rode it quite a bit without the protection and uh, I just trust my gut on it, but that's just me. Jumping back into the middle of the bike here, um, we have our Hyper Pro Steering Stabilizer. This is super important for all you guys that are rolling these faster stoppies. If you're picking up in second gear, third gear, fourth gear, the thing that you really need to be aware of is that head shake and how fast that can come on. I used to have a GPR. I went with this RCS. I haven't had them ever since. So I can truly attest that that is a very good product. It comes from Europe, really hard to find. We're gonna find a couple of those on this bike that you just can't find them anymore. I got a steel welded gas tank. So we take a stock gas tank, you chop it off, have a custom fabricator, revent the tank and put a piece of sheet metal down and form what I like to call half a cut, half a bowl. 
I kind of do like the dented in tanks, but I do like the fab tanks, so this is a good happy medium. So let's talk about our heart. The thing that keeps this bike alive, the motor, um, and starting up front yet again. I have a radiator with two fans on it, both R6 fans, uh, to keep her extra cool. Keeping these motors cool in any stump bike is truly the key to your engine lasting a long time. I normally will run water plus water wetter, but at times I also do run engine ice. Both of them are really good products for keeping these bikes cold. Her heart, I always run a little bit of extra oil. I run it to the top and then some. So when I say and then some, I fill the sight glass all the way to the top and then I add an extra 0.2, 0.3 quarts. And I always do put a little bit of Lucas Motor Honey in her. That's how she stays alive, good, healthy. Uh, I have a clean air mod on it. Of course, I'm not running my breather valve up to my air box, uh, they would fill up and, and hydro lock my motor. So that's one of the things that you have to do to your stock bike before you start stunting it, is reroute that and put a breather up front. As we look straight down, I have these NDC rear sets on here that I actually got with this bike when I bought it back in uh, 2015. So these things have been on here for a very long time. I've never touched them, I've never changed them. Pretty cool that they're still there. They've been good to me. And I also have the Bassani slip-on. Once again, this is one of those parts that you just cannot get anymore. They discontinued them. I don't know why, don't ask me. It is what it is. It's loud, it's fun. It definitely bangs the limiter really loud. Into a little bit more techie side of things, I have this MOSFET rectifier kit. These 0304s are really known for burning out their stators and rectifiers as they get too hot get too old. This basically just runs the rectifier straight to the battery and the stator straight to the battery and it eliminates it out of the wiring harness completely. There are hot parts on these bikes so we actually make a kit for it on this guy. You can check it out down there if you're an 0304 guy having electrical problems. That's probably it. So Mott's right there, right in the stock position. As we move our way on back towards the bike, we have Bella stunt seats. These are our misguided signature ones. They're triple stitched. They're super nice. They come with our tag on them. They've stood up the test of time. I'll tell you what, there's not many guys making quality stunt seats anymore. So grab them from us, you get the special tag, get to be a little bit fancy. They've worked wonders for me. And yes, yet again, let's talk about another part that you're not gonna be able to get, the Hohei bracket. You guys are probably lucky that you're not gonna be able to get this bracket. It's just an old, old piece of technology that once again, it's one of those things that I bought on this bike. I'm super glad I still have it on there. It's kind of a little bit of nostalgia in it. I have an F4i four piston front caliper up front that is for my handbrake. And I have an F4i foot brake caliper that's for my foot brake. And it's all wrapped onto a 250 millimeter rotor, just a little bit bigger than the stock, nothing too crazy. It's enough that it bites down, it'll lock up the, the rear tire, but I'm no European guy with 10 brakes on this thing, jabbing it, jabbing it, jabbing it. It just does what I need it to do. Rear tire, I'm on the Dunlop GPR 300, super reliable, super meaty tire. It lasts me a long time. I love doing rolling burnouts on this thing uh, and drifting, and this one does seem to, to last the longest of all the tires. We carry it. it we throw them on all different types of bikes. They're cheap, they're good. Can't go wrong. Steel brake lines, of course, as well. I'm not running anything rubber. Let me move around to this side. I have my idle cable coming out on the left side, so I never have to take my hand off the throttle to adjust my uh, idle. I like doing no-handers, I like doing circle wheelies, and they all have different idles on them. Uh, I like to run normally right around 3,000 for circle wheelies, 3.5 for no-handers. I'll put this thing up to nine or 10,000 RPMs. I know, it's crazy. But I like going down the highway with no hands, so that's kind of fun. Speaking of no hands, I have this side of the cage. There's a little tech tip, totally free. It's not even a part um, that you hook your foot into, and it's kind of like shift lock on a dirt bike so my foot will hook in right like that I'll brace my thigh my entire upper body and yeah that's that's the key for me at least to do no handers maybe there's other guys with different tips but that's what works for me like I said already the NDC rear set I have a 520 chain I didn't do no 525 conversion 530 conversion it's a 520 EK or RK chain with a 55 2 sprocket and a stock in the front everyone always likes to say you got a pizza sprocket on that jump like that it's not that big it's really not. It's about 10 teeth bigger than stock. I still can get on the highway. I enjoy riding this thing on the street. It is a street bike. I don't believe street bikes should just remain in the lot. So that's what I'm on. I know a lot of guys are on 60s, 64s, big girls, but I enjoy riding this thing on the street. So that's what I did. I also have this sick little switch styles panel that has my headlights and fans and all that good stuff. And it just makes everything on my electronics come together. It's seamless, it's easy, it's nice, it works for me. All right guys, I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff, but this is my bike, this is my baby girl. She's taken care of me this long and I feel like you guys deserve to know the parts that are on her. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, you know, leave it down in the comments. This is literally the bike that I learned how to do 
every single trick that I know how to do on motorcycles on. So this is a, a special one to me. I'm pretty good about getting back to comments, but you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. It's your least favorite motor vlogger, Brian636, signing out with my 636. Let me know what you guys think about the new look down in the comments. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's so freaking clean. It does not look like no 21-year-old bike. I love y'all. Respect life. It's your least favorite motor vlogger, signing out. Peace.